Hello everyone. We're going to be going through applications of exponential functions right now. So we're going to be doing some word problems um, that involve exponents and then uh, logs to solve them. So this is going to be really similar to in the last unit the applications that we did. Um, and actually, now that I look at what I have typed here, this in your packet, this says exponential. Um, but this is this does have to do with logs as well, um, actually mostly logs because you need those to solve the problems. So very similarly to the exponential section, there's situations where a value is being uh, increased or decreased by adding or subtracting a percentage of that original number over and over again. The formula you use for that is exactly the same as in the last unit. So it's A, so your amount equals your initial amount times 1 plus whatever your rate is to the uh, t power or time. So if we want to do an example of this, the very first thing that I always do is I say, okay, well I have a, I have a0, I have r, and I have t. So a $100 investment receives 5% interest each year. So our initial amount is $100, and it receives 5% interest, so that's 0 0.05. After how many years will the investment have doubled? So that's saying, when do we want our initial or our total amount here, we want that to be doubled. So doubling would be at $200, because you're doubling 100. And we don't know what our time is, so we are going to use time, because they're saying, after how many years? So when we plug this in, again it's A equals our initial amount times 1 plus the rate to the t power. So we have 200 equals 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 and we don't know our exponent there. And again, because we don't know this exponent, this is where we're going to have to have a log come into play. So the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and we can add these together here. So we'll have 200 equals 100 times 1.05 to the t. We can divide that 100 out. So we have 2 equals 1.05 to the t power. And this is where we want to go ahead and take the log of both sides. So log here and log here. And what we'll be left with is... I'm going to run out of room. See if I can fit it over here. We'll be left with log of 2 equals log... Nope, I'm going to have to erase it. So let's cut this out here. We'll be left with log of 2 equals log of 1.05 to the t. We can use our power property to bring this down in front. So we have log of 2 equals t log of 1.05. And then we can divide, because again, this piece right here is a number. So we can divide by log 1.05. These will cancel, and you'll be left with just your t equals, or is about equal to, uh, log of 2 divided by log of 1.05, which you can do right in your calculator. And that gives you about 14.2. So in about 14.2 years, our initial $100 investment would double to 2. And that doesn't seem very good, but again, you're only getting a really small 5% interest every single year. Look at the next problem. So sometimes the percentage of increase is applied more than once per year. So this is that next formula, where it's A equals our initial amount, A sub 0, times 1 plus our rate divided by N, all raised to the nt. 
So we have our initial amount, we have our rate, the number of compounds, and the time. So looking at our example, how long will it take an investment of $100, so our initial amount is $100, to reach $450, so we want to get it up to $450 at a rate of 6%, so 0 0.06. Uh, and it says it's being compounded quarterly, so that's four times a year. And again, we don't know what our T is. We don't know how long it's going to be. So, uh, plugging that in. We're going to have 450 equals 100 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 to the 4t. Again, very similar to the last problem where right away we want to go ahead and add these together. So we'll have 450 equals 100 times, if you put that all into your calculator you'll get 1.015 to the 4t divided by our 100. So you have 4.5 equals 1.015 to the 4t. And now again we want to go ahead and take our log. So log of this side, log of this side. And that will be log 4.5 equals log 1.015 to the 4t. Power rule says we can take this and bring it down in front. So we have log of 4.5 is 4t log of 1.015. We can divide our logs. So we'll have 4t equals if we put log of 4.5 divided by log of 1.015, it gives us 101.021999, and then divide that by 4 to get, and I know I'm going to be, I'll try and get below it here, T is about equal to 25.2. Two, six as our final answer. And that seems like a lot of work, but once you do once you do this step right here where you're putting the logs in, it's really just solving an equation because log of 4.5, log of 1.015, those are all just numbers. Uh, we have one more example here before we get into the one that's a little tricky. And this is for the continuously increasing or decreasing. Um, so it's compounded continuously, it's uh, decreasing continuously. The formula for this is going to be A equals our initial amount, which is A sub 0, times E to the RT. And if you recall, that E is a number. It's a number, it's uh, 2.17, something like that. 2.71, sorry. So reading our example, the element fermium has a decay constant of negative 0.00866 days. So our rate is going to be negative 0.00866. After how many days will 7 grams remain of a 10 gram sample? So our initial amount is a 10 gram sample and we want to know when is it going to get down to 7. Uh, again, we do not know our time. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in. So A equals A sub 0. E to the RT is our formula. So that means we have 7 equals 10 E to the negative 0 0.00866 T. can divide by our 10 and we get 0.7 equals e to that decimal.
Now, you can do two things here. You could take the log of both sides, which is perfectly fine, or if you want to make it a little easier on yourself, this E here tells us that we could also take the ln. Take the ln, the natural log of it. So we would end up with ln of 0.7 equals ln of e to the negative 0.00866t. And the reason we would do that is because a really cool thing happens. When you take the ln of e, it actually ends up to be 1. So this will be, I'll write it all out for you. It'll be ln of 0.7 equals negative, because we're going to use the power rule here to bring this down in front. And I don't know if I can fit it all. 0.00866t ln of e. And again, we can divide by ln of e, divide by ln of e, and you'll end up with negative 0.356674943 equals negative 0.00866t. I'm going to divide by our negative 0.00866t. Sorry, no t on the end there. I know I'm writing kind of small, I apologize. Those will cancel out, and to be left with t is about 41. Oh, let me get that out of there. So t is about 41.2 as our final answer. And again, I know this looks really complicated and I had to write really small, I apologize about that. Um, but once you get going on these and do a couple of them, they all turn out to be solved almost identically. It's literally the same steps for every single one. Uh, the toughest part is actually figuring out which formula to use. And uh, sometimes you get really lucky, like this last example right here. So it says, along a level stretch of road, your car runs out of gas. The speed of the car decreases exponentially over time, so we're going to be using some formula. The speed of the car in miles per minute can be expressed using the equation. Oh, look at that. They gave us a formula right here. Isn't that beautiful? So they gave us S equals 1.2 times 0 0.58697 to the T power. And they say to the nearest minute, how long did it take the car to stop? Now, I'm going to split this into two things here because I'm going to do something that I don't want you to write down. And I want to show you how to do... Um, to have a good strategy when you're going through these problems. So, um, when the car is stopped, what is the speed going to be? That should be a pretty straightforward question. When the car is stopped, the speed is zero. So this would be zero equals 1.2 times 0 0.58697 to the t power. We're going to divide by 1.2. As you can see, all of these problems are having the exact same steps pretty much. So one, 0 divided by 1.2 is 0 equals 0.58697 to the t power. Now just like the other ones, we're going to go ahead and take the log of these. Um, but I'm going to point something out. When you do, because you'd have your t come down in front then, so you would have equals t log of 0.58697. But on the other side, when you take the log of 0, your calculator gives you an error. So you cannot do this. It's not asking for an exact answer, though, so we need to figure out some other strategy. Well, if 0 doesn't work, maybe we could find out when something is going really, really slow. Because it does just say, to the nearest minute. It doesn't say it wants an exact answer. So what you actually need to do here is just figure out a speed that's really, really slow. Um, and we're talking about miles per minute here. So if we do the same formula,
But this time, instead of putting our speed as zero, we put it as something really slow, like um, 0 0.01. then we're going to get an answer pretty close to being completely stopped. If you're going one hundredth of a mile per hour, you're going pretty, pretty slow. So again, we're going to divide. So 0 0.01 divided by 1.2 gives us 0 0.0083 repeating. Uh, and when I put it into my calculator, I'll actually use the exact same uh, thing that I got when I type it back in. I'm just saving a little room here so I write that for repeating. And that's going to be 0 0.58697 to the t power. Here's where we would take the log of both sides and you'll end up with if I use the power rule all in the same step it would be log of 0 0.0083 repeating equals t log 0.58697. I would do my division there. These would cancel and I end up with t is about equal to, uh, if I do log of that, divided by log of 0.58697, I end up with about 8.9858, which when we round it to the nearest minute, that actually ends up to be about 9. So 9 minutes. If your car is decreasing at that, at that rate, the speed of it is decreasing at that rate, it will take about 9 minutes for it to stop completely. Um, so again, if you didn't write this one down, that's okay. That's showing you that the log of zero cannot be used. Um, so you have to find another method. So find something that's pretty close, like really, really slow, 0 0.01 miles per minute. And you will, uh, you'll you'll get something really close to the answer. And it's important that it says to the nearest minute in the problem here. We'll practice this a little tomorrow. Um, make sure that you understand where each formula gets used. So this one gave you a formula. Uh, the problem above that was continuous with the E in it. The problem before that was being compounded more than once per year. And the original one is being compounded yearly, so once every year. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful night.